Hey guys, this is Salamander Anagram, and welcome to this new series of videos in which I will be recreating Ableton's beat repeat module from scratch in Reactor. Uh, if you don't know what beat repeat is, it's basically a simple stutter glitch plugin. And I'll give you a short demo here. All right, so this is just basically a simple stutter glitch that's being turned on and off automatically. And we've got four knobs that control um, how it gets turned on and off. And those are the ones that we're going to work on implementing today. So the interval knob controls how long between successive stutter glitches. Um, and those will start at the beginning of a new bar unless the offset knob is greater than zero in which case um, they'll start offset by the number of 16th notes that we have set the offset knob to. The chance knob controls the percentage of chance um, that the effect will turn on at that time. So um, in these examples I've had it set to 100 but if you set it to 50 for example then you'd only have a 50 percent chance of the effect turning on um, at the beginning of a new interval. Our last knob is the gate knob, and this controls how long the effect stays on for before being automatically turned off. All right, so let's move over into Reactor and begin building this. And I'll just start by adding our four knobs to the project. Um, so I'll just create one and then duplicate it. And we can name these interval, offset, chance, and gate. And some of these are going to be kind of annoying to set up because um, they don't really follow a standard knob setup. So I'm going to need to use a table to read out a value for them and set up some multi-texts and stuff like that. So it's a little tedious, but it's just the uh, nature of working within Reactor for stuff like this. So our interval knob has got a total of eight possible values, so I'm going to let it range from 0 to 7, and we'll use that number 0 to 7 to read a value from a table. And our offset knob has a value ranging from 0 to 15. Those are in 16th notes. And so we want to give all of these um, a step size of 1 as well. Um, so we don't get any intermediate values. And um, the chance we can leave alone, just ranging from 0 to 1. But the gate knob can have a total of 19 values, so we're going to let it range from 0 to 18. And again, we'll use a table to read out the actual value that we want um, to be chosen by this knob. All right, so let's create a few multi-texts here for the knobs that need them. And we can start by um, adding one for the interval knob. And so this is just going to um, read out the actual um, setting for the knobs. Right now, you know, a value from 0 to 7 doesn't really tell us anything. So the shortest possible interval uh, that we can set for beat repeat in Ableton is a 132nd note. Then we've got a 16th note, um, an 8th note, a 4th note, a half note, and then a full bar. Uh, two bars and four bars. So those are our options for the interval length. And obviously you can add um, as many different things as you would like here and you'll have to set it up appropriately but it's not that hard. So let's turn the label off of our multi-text. I'm gonna set the width down to 40 um, and maybe down to 38 even we can turn the height down to 10. Just kind of want to make it match the size of the value that we're going to replace on the knob here. 
and just drag it up. All right, so that allows you to set your interval value. And now we can create a second multi-text for the offset knob. So I'm just going to duplicate the first one so we keep all the um, changes that we made to it. I'm going to trash all the values in it. And then um, we're going to set this one up so it's 0, 1 16th, and then the next one's going to be 2 16ths, and so on and so forth. So what I'm going to do is actually just copy the divide by 16 part and just paste it in on every uh, setting here. All right, so just bear with me. There's not too many of these left, so just take a second. And once we're done entering all of our uh, values into this multi-text here, I also want to take a moment to just make them match the colors of the default knob values. Um, and so this is pretty easy. Uh, in the View tab of Properties, uh, you can go and hit the uh, dark button in the style area and then I'm going to change the color of the text as well so um, the text can be white and I'll just do that for both the multi text I created so far just keeping our style looking consistent here and then we can duplicate one of these, and again, we'll delete all the values out of it, but I'll use it to um, read out the value of our gate knob. So the gate knob, um, again, there's 19 possible values. The first 15 are, are 1 16th, 2 16th, 3 16th, all the way up to 15 16th. And then we also have 1 bar, 2 bar, 3 bars, and 4 bars as options. So let's just add all of those one by one. I'm sorry that this is a little tedious, but it gives you a uh, much nicer interface than if you don't do this. The interface is just pure nonsense, basically. You just kind of have to guess at what you're doing. It's not very fun. So if we wanted to change the number of entries in these tables, it would be fairly simple. We would just need to change the range of the knob, add the entry to the multi-text, and then inside of core, um, there will be some tables that we'll be reading from, and you'd have to add the proper value to that table as well. So there's a few different steps that it would take, but it's fairly doable, and um, once we get the main beat repeat kind of working, then I'll show you how you can do that. All right, so slide this last multi-text into place, and we're gonna create a core cell to take care of a lot of the um, behind the scenes stuff here. And the core cell is gonna have a total of six inputs. So we're gonna have four inputs for our knobs. And then we also wanna receive the um, tempo info and the song position. And we'll use the song position um, to trigger the beat repeat turning on and off. So we can wire in the knobs to the lower four inputs. Then I'll create a tempo info module, which you can find in the auxiliary menu, kind of in the middle here. And the song position, I'm actually going to couple with a start-stop module and a router. Um, so those are in the MIDI in menu. You can find the song position and the start-stop. And then we'll grab a router out of the event processing menu. And we're only going to allow the uh, song position events to pass through the router if the gate is on. So this means basically uh, don't trigger new events 
um, if the position song position is changing while the clock is off. So if the user stops the song and then hits the reset button to set it back to zero, it's not going to trigger a new stutter glitch at that point, for example. So we can start naming these. The tempo info is going to give us the beats per second. We've got the position and 96th notes. We have our interval and we have our offset, our percentage chance of triggering a new event, and the gate. We have two outputs. It's going to be a trig output and a milliseconds output. So we're going to use these two outputs to trigger a hold module. And that's going to turn the effect on for the length of time that we are specifying in the milliseconds output. And it'll just use a numeric readout here to read out this value. And we'll see it um, turning on and off on its own at the end of this video. So inside the core cell, let's start with the beats per second here. So we're going to take the beats per second, and we're going to do a 1 over x operation. And so that's going to take beats per second, and it's going to translate it into seconds per beat. So how long is each beat in seconds? Now, a beat is one-fourth of a bar, and we're counting in 96th notes here. So there's a total of 24 96th notes in one beat, because 24 times 4 is 96. So we're going to divide by 24 here. And that's going to give us the length of a 96th note in seconds. And we're going to take that value and multiply it by a thousand, and that's going to give us the length of a 96th note in milliseconds. And that's the time value that uh, the hold module uses, milliseconds. And we can name this quick bus 96th. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is to take our gate input and translate it into 96th notes as well. So this is going to tell us how long our effect stays on for. And the lowest possible value is 1 16th. Um, 96 divided by 16 is 6. And so that means there's 6 96th notes in 1 16th note. So the first value in our table is going to be 6. And we can use a similar uh, method to find all of the values of our table. It's going to be a total of 19 of them. So we'll set the size of the table to 19. And then we can fill them out one by one. So 1 16th note is 6 96th notes. 2 16th notes is 12. 3 is 18. 4 is 24. 30, so we're just uh, putting in multiples of 6 here. We're going to go all the way up to 96. So 42, it's going to be 48, 54, 60, 66, 72, uh, so on and so forth. And then when we reach um, 96, that's the length of one bar. There's 96, 96 notes in one bar. So then we go at two bars. It's 96 times 2 is 192. Um, and 3 bars is 288, 96 times 3, and 96 times 4 is 384. So those are the number, that's the number of 96 notes we're going to keep our effect on for. And so I'm just going to name this quick bus gate 96. So we can take the number of 96 notes and multiply them by the length of a 96th note. And we'll get the um, time to keep our hold module on for in milliseconds. Cool. All right, so the chance knob, um, we don't really need to do anything to this. We can just connect it to a quick bus. The interval, however, wants to have another table. So um, I'm just, just copy and paste our existing table. Um, and again, we're going to take all these values for the interval, and we're going to translate them into 96th notes. So the smallest possible interval we can have is 1 32nd. Um, so 96 divided by 32 is equal to 3. So it's going to be the first value in our table. 
you can have a total of eight values. Um, our second value is going to be 1 16th note, 96 divided by 16 is 6. And so we're just going to take 96 and divide it over whatever we're doing here. We're going to get 12, 24, 48, 96, uh, 192, and 384. So these are, you just take the length of our interval knob and multiply it by 96 notes. Um, okay, and then our offset is already measured in 16th notes. So if we take the number of 16th notes and we want to translate that to 96th notes, all we have to do is multiply it by 6. So there we go. And that's our offset in 96th notes. Okay, so our song position is also measured in 96th notes, of course. And we're going to use it to trigger new values. So I'm going to take the song position and we're going to subtract the offset from it. Then we will divide our current position by the length of the interval and round down. And to do that, I'll use a div mod module. And the div output is automatically going to be a division rounded down. So we'll take the interval in 96 notes to divide by, and that'll get triggered when we receive a new 96th note. All right, so this is going to, the output is going to increase by a value of one every time we want to trigger a new um, event. So I'll use a duplicate filter to make sure that if the value isn't changing, then we're just ignoring whatever comes out of there. We get the same value twice, ignore the second one. We are already have started that interval. And then we'll compare this value and see if it's greater than or equal to zero. And if it is, that means we can just pass it on through. Um, if it's a negative value, we're going to ignore it. Um, and so, for example, um, if you had the offset set to 2 and then you restarted your MIDI clock back to 0, um, you'd get a negative 1 out of here. Um, and that would start a new event, even though I don't really want one there. Um, so this is just allowing you to ignore the negative values. Once we have a new note, uh, or a new event coming out of our greater than or equal to router, then we trigger a random module and we compare the value out to our chance amount. So anything that's less than or equal to our chance value is going to get passed through. And we'll use that to trigger our output. At this point in time, we can start testing our work and making sure that everything is wired up properly. Um, it's not, as we'll see in a moment. We've got an error or two to fix, but it uh, won't take more than a second to fix up. All right, so when we hit our MIDI clock again, uh, I'm going to set the gate to be half of a bar. And we should see this note on half the time. Note that it's not even turning on at all. That's because I made a mistake with our second router here. We want to make sure that the value is less than chance. I'm checking to see if it's greater than chance. We've got chance set to 1. There's no way it's going to be greater than 1. It's because the value from 0 to 1. And again, things aren't quite working properly. See, we want this to stay on half the time, and it's just turning on and then turning off really quickly. And the problem I made here, um, I already noted it in the video, is that we want to be dividing by 24. And uh, for some reason, I divided by 96 here. So just delete that, change it to 24. And then we'll see that our um, events are triggering properly. All right, so in the next video, we'll start adding some sound to this so we can get some real feedback. Thanks for watching. Once again, this is Salamander Anagram.